How's it going guys? Damien Montes with the presentation about the much anticipated Lemon Ghost Hog Noses. Relax, grab onto your seats, enjoy the presentation and introduction to the Lemon Ghost Hog Noses. You guys clicked on this video to see one thing and one thing only, so let's jump right into it. Let's go over the abstract real fast. What is the Lemon Ghost? The origin of the Lemon Ghost. Polygenetic traits, how it's made. Variations of the LG, what kind of morphs are there? The future, what does the future hold for the LG Lemon Ghost? And last but not least, price range, are they worth getting into? So first of all, what is a Lemon Ghost? Let me explain to you guys, a Lemon Ghost has two aspects, two components that make up the LG. The first component, Lemon. The second one is the Ghost. They're called lemons because it's a yellow snake. The pigmentation on the scales and what's reflecting the light shows the yellow spectrum of light and that's how they get their name lemon. So it's a yellow snake and that's the first component of a lemon ghost. So just look at the saddles. Normally on a, on a hog nose, they're a darker color and they're more brown. They're a, they're a stronger color. But on a yellow snake, they're a little bit more uh, diffused in the sense that they blend with the background and it's kind of one, one similar and constant color throughout the snake. The second aspect is actually the ghost part. And in my opinion, it's a little bit more interesting because as you could observe in the picture, you have the coloration that's a little bit more diffused. And it makes the, the snake, uh, it gives it the appearance of having a ghost-like or kind of almost exanthic, if I could put it in perspective. If you observe the lateral sides of the snake, you can appreciate a little bit more in the picture um, how the right side of the snake, half the pattern, it kind of washes out and it kind of blends into the side. It's like if you would have taken a picture on a high shutter speed on a camera, you have that blend between the saddles and the background color and the sidewalls and that's what gives it the, the ghost-like appearance. Now as we go underneath the snake into the ventricle, the belly side of the snake, the ghost translates over to the belly side. On a normal hog nose, you'll have that checkered black and yellow, black and gold. But on a ghost, on a ghosting snake, you'll have more of a translucent, a diffused of a blend, uh, translucent scale. Uh, all that iridescent as well is also enhanced in the ghosting which gives it a really neat and a really unique appearance. Yellow snake and by nature, the yellow snake produces a more light scale in the sense that it gives you a ghost-like appearance, then that's where the name was born, the lemon ghost. It's a yellow snake that typically, because of its bright colors, it gives you that translucent scales on the sides, on the pattern, on the saddles, underneath the belly, and that's what a lemon ghost is. So a little bit of history on the origin of the Lemon Ghost. The originator started this project 21 years ago. He doesn't need an introduction. Everybody knows him, Jeff Galewood at JMG Reptiles. And in an interview that he did with Jermaine over at Shovel Nose Hogs, he answered a few questions regarding the Lemon Ghost and the project that he started 21 years ago. He says that he had an original yellow snake uh, and he paired it to a normal. On the screen there, you're able to see on the left that the yellow lemon ghost snake. I'm not exactly sure if that was the exact snake that he used, but uh, he did have uh, the yellow snake because in the wild, they, they, they tend to be yellow, red, a darker pigmentation. So it's a color that's natural to the hog noses. So he, he bred that yellow snake to a normal visual. On the right side, there's a picture of a wild type uh, hog nose. So the wild top hog nose, you could see how it's got the dark saddles, uh, the background is a light color, it's got a few brown spots here and there, scales that are a, a little bit more contrasted. So that was the original pair. He, he did a yellow snake to a, a wild type or a normal or a classic. And he hatched out the offspring from that pair, from the yellow to the normal. He does say in the video that he hatched out a, a couple yellow snakes, a few yellow snakes. And when he did and he saw the results, he ended up outcrossing and buying, you know, more hog noses to outcross. Uh, he says that he bought a few granite jungles. He bought uh, more yellow snakes or something that had a similar 
a similar trait to what he was looking for because he wanted to create a yellow snake. The main purpose of this project was to create a yellow snake and he knew that he had to increase his gene pool. So that's why he started buying and outcrossing. Along the way, he started seeing that there was ghosting and that was something that he started breeding towards ghosting and also he says that he he saw that the underside on a few of them were were almost pure black so he started having those two projects he 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 had the ghosting as well and he had the black underbelly so those are the two variants that he saw in the lemon ghost one being the ghosting and then the other one being the pure black <laughs> all right now now to the best part of this presentation the genetic aspect to the lemon ghost that's a joke by the way I know that we don't all like uh, genetics. Okay, so just I'll be really thorough with this. So on the screen, we got a few chromosomes, uh, basic, basic genetics, 50% uh, blood from mom, 50% uh, blood from dad. So the lemon ghost is considered to be a polygenic trait. So just the basic information, it's not your recessive. It's not your incomplete dominant. Usually those genes are... are are reduced to one allele in one specific area in a chromosome. So these polygenetics, they're everywhere. They are considered non-allelic, which means that they don't reside in one place. They reside in a lot of different chromosomes. So just so we better understand, let's look at the next slide. The picture here is reflecting the color of skin tones that exist in people, but we're here to talk about hognosis. So just pretend those shades of brown are the shades of yellow. So on the top left, you have that soothing yellow. On the bottom right, you got that stronger yellow, the more uh, predominant uh, tone. So when you crossbreed a soothing yellow to a, a, a bottom right, a dark tone yellow, then you're gonna get something in between. So that, you know, the same thing happens in people. When a dark skinned person um, has a child with a light skinned person, then that's why you know the baby can essentially come out anywhere in between so when you breed a polygenetic it's not just one gene that decides the factor of of the color tone of the hognosis but we're talking about a, a possibility of of six different combinations uh, that's going to decide the color or the the tone of the ghosting and the tone of the lemon so take a second to study the graph because Imagine those being the shades of yellow that that exist in, in, in the lemon ghost. So essentially, there's no lemon ghost that has the same color as any other lemon ghost. Every, every color is unique in its own way, like the same way that the skin tone of, of, of a person is unique to its, you know, everyone has a different skin tone color. Uh, don't be surprised if you have two really bright yellow snakes, hogno snakes, and you breed them together and you're excited thinking oh i'm gonna have even more yellow snakes well polygenetics does not always work out like that so you could breed a soothing yellow to a bright yellow and expect even more yellows but sometimes you'll just hatch a dark brown uh hog noses so that's just the nature of polygenetics because it's not one allele that's deciding it they're not recessive they're not incomplete dominance it's it's a gene pool it's a gene pool so you want to have uh, a hog nose that are very similar to your targeted project um, but don't expect you know 100% results every time because there can be a big surprise you don't ever want to breed a lemon ghost to an exanthic because exanthic takes away the yellow pigmentation so you're gonna have a contradicting uh, project there if you breed to exanthic the big question is how do we make lemonade so we just get some ice we crunch it up. Nah, I'm just joking. No, we're not here to make lemonade, guys. We're here to make hognose lemon ghost. So the big question is, how do we make lemon ghost hognose? So pick a trait that you like. If you like the ghosting, if you like the yellow, if you like both, you essentially want to have an animal that reflects the characteristics that you strongly like because those are the animals that are going to be reproducing um, you know, the qualities that you, 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 you so desire in these, in these hognose. You want to buy a hognose that's appealing to you visually. Don't buy a hognose thinking that it's going to produce you, you know, uh, good looking babies. If the parent is not uh, something that you, you, that, that, that visually appeals to you. If you ever do buy into this project, you need to know that you need a lot of outcrossing. 
So just because you have offspring that that already give you traits that you like, just know that and be ready to buy offspring that are going to give you that outcross um, so that way you keep your gene pool clean because it's really appealing to inbreed these animals. But remember, we're here for the health of the animal and that's the most important thing. So outcrossing and bringing it back to your lines is something that we all need to know and that's called line breeding or selective breeding. Guys, the moment we all been waiting for, come on, Damien, show us some hog noses, variations of lemon ghost, morph combos. I have here Wama, Granite Jungle, LG Sable, LG Lavender, Green Hypo, Quartz Line. All right, let's get to it. Can we just stop for a second and just appreciate the hog nose that's on the screen from South California Herbs? Just look at that Wama, look at that lemon ghost, look at that beauty. Very diffused very nice coloration almost exanthic yet yellow and just the walmart rings around it and beautiful and if you don't know what i'm talking about let's look at the next slide side by side comparison the one on the right is a wama python essentially where the the lemon ghost wama got its name because of the ring like pattern throughout its body the one on the left needs no introduction it's a lemon ghost wama just beautiful it's got that really nice contrast the the darkening saddles uh, it's got that yellow ghost appearance, almost exanthic like I'm talking about. Uh, just a really beautiful snake. I'm not sure. Uh, I mean, that picture almost looked like it almost looks like it's Photoshop, but that's just a beautiful animal. That's that's all I'm trying to say. That's a very nice animal right there. So there you have a lemon ghost wama. Just appreciate it because we're about to move on. So now here we're looking at a lemon ghost wama to a granite jungle. I mean, this is a nice morph. This is a nice combination of polygenetics, a pattern. The one on the left, you have that, that you know, it's just it's just a crazy pattern. It's not a reverse stripe. You got that jungle wanting to come in. You got the lemon ghost trying to fight. You got that yellow tint to the snake. Uh, this is an outcross for sure. So uh, it's very beautiful. The one on the right, uh, just look at the wama type. It's not exactly wama because it's got that granite jungle but really nice just really nice snakes right there but hold on for a second hold on right here we have a lemon ghost sable just that dark contrast with the golden background just a beautiful animal almost looks like a mai tai or something of that sort but it's just polygenetics it's just it's just one recessive that's 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 being uh visually expressed with that nice uh backup that nice background just a beautiful animal and i'm sure as we line breed and as we cross breed uh these lemon ghosts we're just gonna uh, better the genes of of all the recessives uh the one on the right you have eslin's uh hog nose that he sold over to hardcore hog nose i think his name is also jeff i think his name's jeff um yeah just beautiful animal just makes the lavender really uh, pop and just really bright just beautiful outstanding animal that's a very nice male Quartz, and Quartz uh, Gavirth. So we have that line. It's a green hypo. So I just wanted, I just want to explain something real fast. So notice how this is more diffused. The color is more, is more soothing. So I believe this is more of a green hypo or a green line lemon ghost. Uh, you got to be really careful because a lot of, a lot of the lemon ghosts um, out there are from JMG, which I'm sure he used a red line a lemon ghost. It's not exactly a green line. So when you crossbreed a green to a red, uh, polygenetically, which one do you think is going to dominate? Which one do you think is going to dominate? You think the green is going to dominate or you think the red is going to dominate? Well, in polygenetics, the stronger color and the darker color, the more natural color to the hog nose is going to dominate. So you're going to have the red take over essentially the green hypo uh, where the visual is going to give you a more popping uh, instead of the more soothing I'll just let you know right now that breeding a light color to a light color or a green to a green line is not an easy task, guys. It's not an easy task. Um, it takes a lot of patience, a lot of dedication. But just look at that snake. You have a really light toned, a very soothing yellow uh, with the Wama pattern. Just beautiful snake overall. The future for the LGs at Angry Hogs. When life gives you lemons, you make some lemonade, folks. Here at Angry Hogs, we have, thankfully, a LG Superconda double head coral from Exotic Firehogs. In the future, hopefully, we're going to make some lavender 
lemon ghost, some coral lemon ghost, implement that into our crossbreeding. We got a pair from JMG. So we're really excited to make some more lemons and just have more yellow snakes. It's one of my favorite colors. I think it's outstanding, just the yellow. And it's really hard to get in, in camera on pictures, but the yellow just intensifies as they grow, as they shed, every time they get older. Guys, I'm just going to say this once, but the future for hognose is in polygenetics. Why? Because there's no more, there, there hasn't been a recessive that has came out for a few years now. So the, there's no way to make a recessive better. You can't breed a recessive to a recessive and wait and expect to make it better uh, because that's not how it works. Polygenetics is what enhances the recessive that we already have. If you notice the super arctic, the only thing that can change its background is the is the polygenetic traits. Like which one? For example, watermelon super arctic. So the watermelon gene, it, it changes the background so that way you don't have that typical uh, black and white classic super arctics you know we all love them there's nothing wrong with them but you know uh, the future of the hobby is through polygenetics and that kind of leads me to the conclusion of this presentation shout out to Jermaine for producing that awesome hognose I don't know what it is yet but it's beautiful on the left we have another JMG hognose that laid eggs uh, it's just a beautiful morph guys it's a it's a yellow ghost it's a lemon ghost um so the question is is it worth it to invest it man if you're still asking me this question at the end of this video you need to get on morph market you need to buy yourself a yellow snake right now i'm telling you the future of this hobby just like any other hobby is in polygenetics we're gonna get to a point where we're gonna have constant yellow snakes through breeding and you're gonna wish that you were on the train uh on the train wagon so just subscribe like the video please buy yourself a lemon goes right now see you guys i'm out